These are the best GPS bike computers as ridden and reviewed by the testers here at Bike Radar. If you'd like to know any more about any of the computers mentioned in this video, then you'll find the links to the full reviews in the description below. As ever, remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you know when we've uploaded a new video. Before we get into the reviews, I'll quickly run through what you need to consider when buying a cycling computer. Firstly, let's touch on price. There are a host of great options around the 200 to 300 pound or 250 to 350 dollar mark. However, things can easily get expensive, so it can be worth looking away from the latest units if you want to save a little bit of cash. Then look at whether you want actual navigation or just ride tracking. Generally speaking, navigational GPS units will cost more because they feature built-in maps, additional storage, navigation software, and often a much larger screen to make use of all of this information. But if you just want to see your ride data, you can get a smaller and lighter device, which is often cheaper. Features such as mapping can put a dent in a unit's battery life, but you can generally expect 15 to 20 hours of runtime. Anything under that can be frustrating as you'll just be recharging your unit a lot. If you're going to be doing really long rides, then look for something with a bigger battery. Next, consider what kind of connectivity you want. Being able to hook your bike computer up to your smartphone and Wi-Fi is super useful for device setup, allowing loved ones to track your location and for just automatically uploading your ride when you get home. Bluetooth and Ant Plus cycling computers will link up to external sensors, so you can pair them with devices such as heart rate monitors, cadence sensors, speed and power meters and, well, even more. Speaking of those additional sensors, what training data your computer can show you is really important. Beyond simply providing live readouts for auxiliary devices, some cycling computer brands claim that their computers can use this data to establish VO2 max and FTP, which stands for Functional Threshold Power. Some computers can even provide insight into the recovery time that you need, as well as your current training load. And finally, for those of you like me who love to climb, and those of you that just can't wait to see the top of that hill, climbing features are one to look out for. These can help you to see how far to the top you still have to go, which is great for helping you to pace your effort. Hopefully that'll improve your enjoyment of climbing or even allow you to go a bit faster. Right, with that done, let's get to the computers. Oh, I tell you what, it's nice to get going on a day like today. Now, Garmin's latest top-end computer has a neat little trick. There's a solar glass screen that can extend your runtime up to an industry-leading claimed 45 hours. We regularly gained 10 extra minutes per hour of charge on summer rides. But if you don't need the extra juice, then there is a non-solar version which will save you over £100. The Edge 1040 is much more of a training aid than just a ride recorder, giving you your training status, recovery time, and more. It's highly configurable and records loads of training stats. It also links automatically into the best-in-class Garmin Connect training infrastructure, giving you route planning using Garmin's heat maps from its rider community, and lots of post-ride analysis options that other sites make you pay for. The Edge 1040 Solar really impressed us in testing with the massive battery life and easy to read screen, making it a brilliant option if you have the cash. Now, if you want the massive screen size but can't face the 1040's price, the older 1030 Plus features nigh on the same physical dimensions but packs a less powerful processor. While scrolling through the maps on the 1030 Plus might be a little less smooth, the 36 hour battery life and huge screen makes it brilliant in daily use. The 2022 updates to the Wahoo Element Roam improve what was already one of the very best bike computers available. On the outside, they are quite slight, but inside there's more data storage, a more colorful display, and new functionality, including profiles for climbs on pre-mapped routes. 
There are more changes under the bonnet of the new Wahoo Element Roam than there are on the surface, although these include an increase in memory from 4GB to 32GB. Wahoo has also added dual-band GPS to the Element Roam, which should provide a more accurate, more reliable GPS fix. Setup through the smartphone app is still incredibly simple, and once riding, the screen is clear and the routing easy to follow. Now, Wahoo has just added Summit Segment Climb Profile data, and it makes tackling a climb just a little bit easier. Now, we love the USB-C charging port, and battery life stands at a healthy 17 hours. Oh, tell you what, it is an half chilly today. Now, the Hammerhead Karoo 2. This does things a little bit differently from other cycling computers. It's based on an Android operating system, which gives you fast screen response and Android style fields and gestures. The resolution of the sharp color touchscreen is also much greater than the competitors, which makes it really, really nice to use. The Karoo 2 is currently the only cycling computer that gives you climb profiles on the fly as you ride, so there's no need to pre-plan a route to display gradient and distance to the top. What you see as you ride is completely configurable. The computer offers stock profiles and you can add, remove or configure profiles at will, working on the device itself. You can even pop a SIM card in the Karoo 2 if you want a fully wireless experience. That said, the battery life is on the shorter side at just eight hours. Back to Garmin now, and the Edge 830 builds on the 820's impressive array of features with on-device route creation, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, customizable apps, Strava integration and group messaging, and tracking, and even an alarm function. On top of all of that, there are performance monitoring insights to give you information on your VO2 max, recovery status, training load, heat and altitude acclimation, and your nutrition and hydration status. Honestly, it's almost too much information. The maps and navigation features are easy to understand and it's relatively simple to program in routes. The on-device data and displays are fantastically simple to read when you're on the move, but it's certainly worth investing in additional sensors if you don't already have compatible ones. If you can manage without the touchscreen or you simply don't want one, then the Edge 530 is a brilliant and cheaper alternative. Externally almost identical, the Edge 530 shares almost all of its features with the more expensive Edge 830, so it has won a good number of fans in its time. Well, Sigma may not be as well known as the likes of Wahoo and Garmin, but its ROX 11.1 EVO is an excellent bike computer, combining a user-friendly interface with riding and training data. The unit has a 1.77 inch display, which is smaller than many other bike computers, but this means that it sits unobtrusively on your handlebar. The computer has over 150 operations, including an emergency crash notification feature, and you can save up to 20 profiles to display different information, making it great if you ride multiple cycling disciplines. When it comes to mapping, you can upload routes from Komoot in the computer's smartphone app. The display only shows a breadcrumb trail, which is fine for road and gravel rides, but not so great for mountain biking. But if simplicity is what you're after, the ROX 11.1 EVO is a very good bet. The Wahoo Element Bolt V2 has it all when it comes to the user interface, with all of the setup done via the smart app. It now offers a color screen, smart navigation, USB-C charging, and improved battery life over the original Bolt. It syncs seamlessly with most third-party apps and performs well on the bike and on the road, as well as on the smart trainer. 
If you're looking for a GPS computer to track your performance with over 170 functions and an impressive 15 hour battery life, all in a neat minimalist package, then the Bolt V2 is probably for you. You'll be best off doing your planning before you set out on a ride though. The mapping capabilities aren't as good as on the Hammerhead and Garmin computers, but the Bolt is more affordable. Positioned as a tool primarily for navigation, the Explore 2 strips away some of the myriad data that the most expensive edge head units offer. Whereas the Solar Screen 1040 will set you back over £600, the Explore 2 can be had for less than half that, a significant cost saving in anyone's book. In this guise, the Explore 2 lacks the power pin connections on the rear of the recent Edge models, so it misses out on compatibility with Garmin's power extending battery pack. However, Garmin does offer a more expensive power mount bundle with the power pins at £339, so if you want to go longer than the claimed 16 hour battery life, you'll need to opt for the more expensive bundle. The main catch with the Explore 2 is that it lacks the full suite of features you get with Garmin's other Edge models. In terms of hardware, this means no Wi-Fi connectivity for direct uploading of your rides. Instead, it uploads to Garmin Connect and Strava via your phone, just as older Garmin's used to. Garmin has also ditched the ability to connect to electronic drivetrains and cut the majority of structured training support now available through the higher priced Edge computers. However, unlike its Edge predecessor, it comes with both Ant Plus and Bluetooth connectivity, bringing improved availability to connect to all the sensors you might want to use. It can even connect to, record from, and operate a smart trainer. So the Garmin Edge Explore 2 could be described as the Edge Lite, but for many prospective buyers, it will deliver all the bike computer you ever need and at a decent price. The Bryson 420T is a competitively priced cycling computer that comes with a heart rate monitor and cadence sensor included, though you can get the standalone 420E head unit for just over a hundred quid. The cycling computer has an impressive 77 functions, including everything that you need for training, such as heart rate and power readings, which it can present as averages and maximums. The 420T does not have mapping, making it more of a training tool than a computer that will help you explore your surroundings. That said, you can load a GPX to the 420T for basic turn-by-turn -turn navigation. A claimed 35-hour battery life and a 4-hour charge sets the Bryson 420T apart from the competition. Well, that should have given you a few options. Remember, all of the links to the full reviews are down in the description below. So if one of these has tickled your fancy, make sure you go and read more about it. Is there a computer that you think we've missed? And which one is your favorite? Let us know in the comments section before liking this video, subscribing, and watching more glorious Bike Radar content. We'll see you in the next one.